Hey guys, I'm just going to walk you through the process that I use to convert a color, color photograph, portraits, or even landscapes into black and white. And a lot of people seem to struggle with this. It's really not that complicated if you just uh, understand how the tools work in Photoshop. Here are some examples. Uh, you can see this few of the portraits I've taken recently and then converted into black and white. These were shot on the Canon 5DS at 50 megapixels, so there's quite a bit of resolution here. Uh, great for shooting por portraits. So here are a few examples. Uh, these were shot in studio with a studio strobe. Uh, actually two strobes, but one large softbox on camera left and then a smaller fill uh, softbox on camera right. Just a simple black backdrop. So those are a few examples. So here's the original color portrait, uh, the black and white one in color. And we're going to do this non-destructively in Photoshop. So first off, a lot of people will just go up here to image and adjustments and hue and saturation and desaturate the image. And that works. Gives you a black and white image. Can, can actually turn out to be quite nice depending on the photograph. But we want a little more control than this. So I'm going to cancel out of the hue and saturation. And you may have seen under adjustments and there is a black and white adjustment. And this gets us closer to, to having more control. We have, uh, so you can see there's some presets here. And if you were to shoot um, black and white film and use uh, these different colored filters, this, this is simulating what the result would be. So blue filter, you can see, is increasing the blue wavelengths of, of light and decreasing the, the warmer greens and yellows and reds. And you can quickly preview and see what each of these filters does. So again, you can get some really nice results um, with with these filters. There's a high contrast blue filter, and you can see what that does. It kind of has an unnatural effect on the skin tone. Um, but we can also use a high contrast red filter, which is a little, a little more natural. Uh, but it does kind of tend to soften the skin. So what I'm going to do is actually not use this control panel either. I'm going to cancel this, and then come down here. We have our background layer selected. I'm just going to choose a new adjustment layer and we're going to use the channel mixer. And so I think, I believe this is very similar to the black and white image adjustment, but we're going to use it in a slightly different way. So you're going to click the monochrome and that's going to desaturate the image. And then again, you have these red, blue, and green sliders. We can ch change those to see what that does to the image. This is adjusting the amount of, of red, blues, or greens uh, before the conversion to black and white. And the constant here is going to move the whole histogram all at once. So you can see you can, you can move all that data over here in the histogram all the way to the right or all the way to the left. I'm just going to put this and uh, just lighten it a little bit at about plus two. Now because this is a adjustment layer, we can go back and adjust this at any time after we do the next step. And the next step, the next thing I like to do is actually adjust the curve directly. So we're going to add another adjustment layer on top of this one, a curves adjustment. And you can see that came in here. And here we have a curve. So you can manually adjust this curve. Or what I'm going to do is use this tool here uh, that allows you to click and drag in the image to modify the curve. So if we click this and then hover over, you can see the eyedropper tool is showing, and you can see on the curve as I move this around, it's showing what part of that curve those shades of gray is going to influence. So as we, as we get over into the highlight area, you can see it's higher up on the right hand side of that curve. So if I click and hold, uh, we can move the mouse up or down to adjust the curve. And you can see as I push it up, it's pushing that curve up and down the same thing. So a lot of times what I find is if you just do a simple desaturation, the image ends up looking pretty flat. So we want to kind of increase uh, the difference between highlights and shadows and midtones. So what I'm going to do is just push up the highlight just a little bit. And let's see, you know, we have quite a bit of latitude there before we start losing too much data. But uh, you can experiment with that. And once you have a point there, 
you can either move the point manually or continue to use this tool. Uh, once we've adjusted the highlights, I'm going to now look for something in the mid-tones, the gray area. So maybe something in here. And I want to increase the difference between the highlights and that mid-tone. So I'm going to drag down. And you can play with it and see how aggressive you want to be. But we're just going to decrease uh, the value there on those mid-tones. And then you can do the same thing for black. So we, I know the background uh, is supposed to be black, so I'm just going to hold out here and drag that down. And you can see uh, how much more interesting that is. You have much less of a flat image. And so this curve now is representing a larger difference between the highlights and the midtones and the shadows. And, and for me, that makes a more interesting black and white image with a greater dynamic range. You have rich blacks all the way up to very bright highlights. So another thing I might do here is add some more adjustments and to do that I want to use the raw photo filter and so what I'm going to do is bake all of these together into a new layer on top. And we're, Again we're working non-destructively we're not going to destroy these layers so we could always go back and and re-edit them. So what I'm going to do is combine these layers into a new layer on top I'm going to do that by holding Command, Option, Shift, and E. So now this layer is uh, so now this layer is just all of these combined. I can turn that off, and it's exactly the same thing. And to this layer, I'm going to add. I'm actually going to call this layer so I don't forget the raw filter. So I'm going to add the camera raw filter to this layer. And here I just want to add a little bit of clarity. The clarity slider is really great at bringing out these small details. We could add a little bit of sharpening too. We could add just a little bit of sharpening as well. Uh, but that's more of a personal preference. And hit OK. And then finally the last thing I like to do is just to add a little bit of warmth to the black and white. And I do that uh, with Another adjustment layer, if you click on the adjustment layer and go to photo filter, we're just going to add a little bit of warming filter. So any of these will work. Uh, warming filter 85. And I like to decrease the density just a touch. I just want a little bit of warmth, a little bit of that warm orange color uh, to come through. And that's it. So you can see here the before and after. Turn off these layers. And the after. Okay, this technique also works on landscape photographs, so if you have a nice landscape. This is a drone shot that I took in Palisades Reservoir uh, here in Idaho. And I'm going to do basically the same process. So I'm going to add a channel mixer adjustment. And go to monochrome. And if you notice, there are presets up here too, so you could choose some of these and see what's working best for you. I'm just going to go to the default and make my own adjustments. Okay, then again I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to bring down those shadows and maybe bring up the highlight area and then bring down the midtones a little bit. And you can see now we have a bigger difference again between highlights, shadows, and midtones. And if we toggle back, you can see how flat just the, the basic conversion looks. And then and then with the adjusted curve, uh, we have a greater difference between those values and more contrast. So I hope you got something from this video. Thanks for watching. I'd love to see your black and white images. You can post them over in the Camera Stupid Facebook group. There's a link in the description. And we'll see you guys next time.